In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. As we gather together to celebrate this Mass, I'm just going to invite all people to please be seated. And one of our Toro's grandsons is going to come up and just speak to us about his grandfather. We pray, Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son who died on the cross was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant, we pray, that your servant who has gone to his rest in Christ may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. And now we'll have the first reading. Good is the Lord to one who waits for him, to the soul. 
have the second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. John. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The people quarreled among themselves saying, how can this man give us flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, amen, amen, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Please be seated. I got to substitute teach last week the seventh graders, uh, the altar service, was I a good substitute teacher? I would let them do whatever they wanted to do. I, I can't really, I'm not a good disciplinary person. It was chaos. Was it chaos? Yeah, it was a little chaos. <laughs> uh, and after they did their lesson, I, I was like, let's just talk about life. Like, uh, you know, like, tell me what's going on. And, uh, you know, and, and I was amazed because like they were like, we're bored, there's nothing going on. And I was like, there's got to be stuff going on. Like, there's got to be something interesting. Tell me what's going on with life. And, you know, it took time. And then we started talking about TikTok and you guys perked up a little bit. Um, and then, you know, like, uh, but I went to go teach the fourth graders. And the fourth graders are like the complete opposite of the seventh graders. They're almost like, you got you to gotta reel them in. There's so much energy and so much going on. And I said, that, guys, the seventh graders are bored. And they're like, why are they bored? I said, I don't know, are you guys bored? And they're like, we're not bored. And, uh, and we got into a discussion, a great discussion about, uh, like, uh, about friendship and, and you know, what it is to be a friend, how you have to like yourself in order to, to, to you know, like yourself and then share yourself and your time and your talents with someone else. Uh, that, that's the key to friendship, you know? And you want to make sure that the kids know that the, 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 the primary part is, is saying, I, I like me, I have something to offer, I'm, I'm, a, I'm trying my best. And, you know, that's getting someone to try to be comfortable in their own skin, really, uh, be comfortable. And uh, this week, the parable, I was reflecting on that and reflecting on, it was the parable of the prodigal son. Do you guys know the story? It's one of the most famous gospels, the prodigal son story. And um, what I realized in praying over that scripture is that, you know, there's times in my life where I'm like the one son and I, you know, I stray from God. There's times where I'm like the other son and I'm bitter and mad about my brother or whoever. And I, I can be both the sons, but the goal is to be like the father. And the father does this beautiful thing where he says to the son, after the second son gets mad, you know how it goes. He goes, 
you, 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 he took all your money, he ran off, he spent all your money, and now you're having a big feast for him. And he's like, I've been here the whole time, you've never done anything for me. And he puts his arm around the son, and he says, he says, you have always been with me. Everything I have is yours. And I, that, that, like, that really struck me this week. Jesus using this parable to say, everything I have is yours. It, you have always been with me. And I tried to envision God saying that to me, to say like, I, you know, you, you've always been with me. Everything I have is yours. And, and you could sit in that and say, well, then what else do I need, right? What else do I need? And I, I share all this because I think it seems to me, just in a little bit of listening about Arturo's life, um, from the grandsons, from some of his community, the community he lived in, the crew, um, that he was uh, joyful, he liked telling stories, and ultimately, ultimately, what you said uh, about your grandfather is that when someone encounters us, we want them to walk away feeling better for the encounter. Like, that's, that's really the healing power of, of, of what it means to be a loving, giving human being. And we would ultimately say that that ties into to Jesus. Jesus, this is what he taught us. This is what he showed us. And it sounds like he lived that way. To encounter him at the table, uh, at the dance floor, at the tennis court or the pool was to walk away feeling better uh, about life. Because let's, let's, let's be honest, we all know people that we walk away from feeling worse, right? <laughs> Right? We, some people just want to, they just suck the life out of you, right? Like, and it's draining versus what is the person that brings healing? And so um, one of the, the people from the community mentioned that he would bring Artu she would bring Arturo uh, communion. And, and she said he was so moved when he would get to receive communion that he would cry and thank God for the gift of his life. You know, to, to have the Eucharist, we believe it's Jesus, walk into the house. Isn't that like the first instinct, just to cry with gratitude, just to say, look how good it's been. And that's saying thank you to Jesus. Jesus walks in in the Eucharist and, and, uh, and he just cries, right? And he just cries. It's funny because, you know, my grandfather, I, he, you know, he, he passed a few years ago. I buried him. And I think he struggled with the faith a little bit. He, he had a tough life and he could be a tough guy. I loved him, he was my grandfather. But every time I would walk in the room, he'd start crying, <laughs> right? I said, that's, that's old school Catholic guilt right there. Like, Grandpa, relax, <laughs> right? But, but for Arturo, Jesus walks in the room and, and, uh, and Arturo cries with gratitude. And, and that's the response I always want to have. And the, the second reading, I know it was hard. Who did the second reading? I know it was hard. It was, you know, and... What you said uh, at the end of it was so beautiful. Um, it's, you know, it's talking about persevering, persevering. And, and then it says at the end, uh, it, it kind of says like, right now, we're children of God. You and I, we follow God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're children of God. What we are to be, what our Toro is experiencing is somewhat of a mystery. They're saying like, it's a bit of a mystery, uh, but we, we anticipate and we look forward to it. Uh, and then it says, we shall see him as he is. That was the last line. For where we go, we, we will see him as he is. For us down below, for us down below as Catholics, we see him in the bread and the wine. That's, that Jesus was trying to teach the people of his time. I am, my blood is true drink, my flesh is true food. And we call it the perpetual memorial. He leaves the perpetual memorial. It's directly linked to the Passover. It's directly linked to the crucifixion and the resurrection, this little tiny piece of bread. And I, I've been thinking about this a lot because it's a pretty bold claim to say that the piece of bread is God. Like, you know, we believe that it's the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. It's, it's, uh, it's really fully God, fully man, this little tiny piece of bread. What a bold claim. And I gotta try to teach this to second graders. You know how hard it is to teach second graders anything? Like, but to try to explain the Eucharist to them is like, it could be a nightmare sometimes. And I've been doing it for eight years. And, uh, and I realized the analogy that I always make, and this is why I think the Eucharist is ingenious on Jesus' part, um, is that he can, he can be everywhere in the world at every time, and he can come to all of us right now as he's going to come on the altar in, in a little while, 
and he's going to individually come to every single one of your hearts. Like, you, you know, we're all going to get to experience him, and that's the community that we share, but you can all go sit, and Jesus is as close, how much closer could we ask God to be in our very person by the power of the Eucharist? So down here, it's, we call it the bread of life. It's the food of life. It's what gives strength to our souls. But it is just like everything else. It's passing away. But one day, if we keep persevering, we hopefully live a life of healing, like our friend here. And then when we pass away, we too shall see him as he is. And that's the goal of our human existence, to become saints, to, to follow God and to trust him and to be a person who heals so we thank the Lord for this man and the friendships. I hope that uh, one day we will all meet at the heavenly banquet. Let us stand and pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be near, O Lord, we pray to your servant, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to him or any human fault have affected him, it may be by your loving gift forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one, one alone, Jesus accepted death so that we might all escape from dying. As one man, he chose to die so that in your sight, we all might live forever. So, with the company of the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Please kneel or be seated. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Poor sinner. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us stand and we will pray in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. I just do the fist pump. Peace with you. Peace with you.
please kneel or be seated. At this time, the ushers will welcome you forward to receive the Eucharist. Uh, we welcome you to receive Jesus present in the Eucharist. If you wish not to receive, please just put your arms in a cross to receive a blessing. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ give you safe for eternal life. The body of Christ. Amen. Are you guys in second grade above second grade? Do they want to receive? Would you guys like to receive? The body of Christ. 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 Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Oops, sorry. The body of Christ. 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 Thanks, Kathy. and purity of heart that's what been given to us in time might be our healing for all of eternity. Let us stand and pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant, our Torah, who has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness, strengthen our hope that one day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Let us pray. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the gifts which you bestowed upon your servant in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. And merciful Lord, please turn toward us, listen to our prayers, open the gates of paradise to your servant, and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith till we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May he rest in peace. May his soul and all the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. And in that peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. Please join in singing number 432. How great thou art, number 432. You can start.